Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys, and that is doing some serious hardcore EAA. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com, and of course, this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning, owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than they could count, and guess what this is one of them so let's check it out so anyway if you're not familiar with the eaa essentially what it stands for uh, i mean i've done a video on this before but what it, st what it stands for is electronically assisted astronomy right um and essentially what that does is, is instead of using an eyepiece you're going to be using an astronomy camera to view objects uh it's kind of like astrophotography very similar except the exposures that you're you know that you're doing are very quick with this uh so you know just kind of just to, generally speaking uh let's kind of cover the equipment just real quick the scope we've got is a 12 inch mid advanced coma free uh 12 inch sct uh the mount that we're running today is a lesmon ag 11 mount um, I actually have a secondary little uh, 60 millimeter um, ED doublet there uh, with another camera that uh, I'll kind of get into in a second here. Um, so yeah, so the way that this you know normally works is again you use a camera for EA right instead of an eyepiece. Now what you could do, you know, if you're if you're like you know if you're like for real about this, you know. <laughs> For real about this is you could actually get one of these devices that are called a flip mirror right to where basically there's a mirror so this is essentially a diagonal right you know kind of like a two-inch diagonal but you could actually flip the mirror out of the way so basically you can either send the light you know to the camera or up to your IP so this is a 24 millimeter Explorer Scientific 68 degree that I've got running and I use this eyepiece for this application only so um I really enjoy doing this because, um, you know, like for those of you guys that watch my channel, you guys know that I'm kind of more of a visual observer. Uh, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds, essentially. I mean, you know, usually what I'll do is I'll kind of keep one eye masked with, you know, like a, a, an eye patch, which is somewhere around here in the observatory, right? Uh, that I'm going to be looking through with, uh, you know, with the eyepiece, right? So usually when I go to a new object, First, I'll take a look at it, check it out through the eyepiece, you know, if there needs to be like some centering done, you know, I could do that real quick, so that makes it real nice. And then, you know, once I've had a good look through the eyepiece, what I do is, you know, I just flip the mirror and I could, you know, shoot the light out to the camera and start capturing, you know, a live stack with uh, sharp cap with them. Uh, so the little scope here, you know, kind of going back to this, uh, what all I do with this, because this is, you know, it's a pretty big instrument, right? And actually, I, you know, I forgot to mention, I do shoot at f10. Why? Uh, it's because, you know, I've, you know, I've seen like a lot of the bigger, you know, like kind of brighter objects. So like a lot of times, you know, when I'm using this rig, I'm looking for those really small, like planetary nebula or like galaxies. And, you know, you really need the extra image scale so i shoot at f10 uh that does give you you know you know naturally because that's kind of what i'm aiming for right <laughs> it does give you a uh, narrow field of view which is where this little guy comes in so some objects that don't fit on the big scope right i actually do eaa you know with this guy um also i could do um what is it called uh like the thing to where you could align you know the scope to the sky with this because uh it, it really won't uh, work with this I'll, I'll post in the the name of uh what it's called in the video for some reason i'm like having a hard time coming up with the name but anyway yeah so like i use this to basically you know precise like i, I align this you know very well with the tube and i could actually use uh you know the software to basically align you know very precisely like after a slew where you know where the scope is pointing with this little guy so that works really well um you know here we've got a 24 inch uh, 4k monitor and uh, normally i power this with my surface pro which is not out here yet which you know we will get in a second and you know once it kind of gets dark we'll get this party on the road and i'll kind of take you for a test drive with how it is to do EAA with the beast like this guy. 
All right, guys and gals, so um, it's finally dark, actually, this, <laughs> it's, this is, you know, like in the summer and it gets dark pretty, pretty late. It's like, I don't know, like 10, 30 already. Um, but anyhow, let me kill all these lights on the camera and I'll show you guys what I normally do. So I just polar or not polar I just align the mount um, to to have the go-to working right and uh, so it's connected um, so for my planetarium I personally use uh, you know I'm not French I don't know it's in French but it's Cartes du Soleil or something like that pardon my French uh, but anyway, this is what I personally use out at the observatory. Uh, so basically, you know, try to have the screen in here. So that's where the scope's pointed at right there, which is, uh, I think it's L tier, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Alpha Butas. Um, the object that we're going to do first is uh, M51 and the reason that I want to do that is because um, if you watched my previous video on EAA right um, that's kind of like the object that I did right now it's you know really high in the sky and I just want to show kind of like the world I guess <laughs> Um, what you get uh, by going to a larger image scale and imaging, you know, with the larger scope um, at f10 versus uh, the previous time I did this was the, with the FSQ 106, which is, you know, basically a four inch apple that's got a focal length of, I believe, like, you know, around. Uh, I forget what it is, but it's like five to six hundred millimeters, so pretty short. This is essentially at three thousand millimeters. Okay. So um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm trying to select M51. Um, it keeps on doing something else. Bad, bad program. All right. So okay, here we go. M51. So I selected it, center on object, and then I'm going to say uh, slew to it. And hopefully, if everything works out, the scope will go to it. All right, so it looks like that's where she is, okay. Um, and let's kill the light again. You know, so I'm, I'm starting sharp cap. By the way, if you're not familiar with what sharp cap is, um, it's like the most awesome piece of software for um, for doing EAA. So by all means, look it up. You know, I own the pro version, which is the paid version. Even the basic version, you know, back when I used to use it, was pretty, you know, pretty decent. Give you a decent amount of features. But you know, I mean, this thing's so awesome. I mean, I would highly recommend the pro version. And I'm not gonna get into like you know, the details of what and the pro version versus the regular version. Not really what this video is about. All right, so <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's. I'm gonna just just real quickly. So this is kind of my normal workflow, you know, of of how I I normally do this. Okay, so I just did the slew. Uh, I'm gonna just check to see if you know if the galaxy is actually in the frame, and so. I don't know how well, yeah, it's showing up, okay, so this is the actual core of the galaxy, so the slew is pretty short, as you saw, so I'm pretty close to there, um, so I'm actually going to, uh, I'm not going to do, uh, the, uh, 
Man, I so I remember the name, right? <laughs> I remember the name of the algorithm that like aligns the scope for you, and then I forgot it again. Bad, bad flat tonight. Okay, but anyway, um, I'm just gonna manually kind of like center this up. I'm not gonna do the algorithm for this object. Actually, let's see here. Okay, yeah, so um, it's kind of hard to see, but it's like right there, so basically it's it's centered. Uh, so I just use the hand controller to kind of center it up. Again, okay. so, and I normally do five second exposures for a lot of my EAA with this, you know, particular setup, and, you know, I'll kind of show you the specs, hopefully. So that, uh, so I'm, I'm going to do five seconds. Uh, Gain wise, I usually do 375, and you know, the cooler is on, you know, on the camera. I'm cooling to, you know, if you're curious, a negative 15 degrees. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna start the live stack. So, basically, you know, again, if you know, if you're not familiar with the AA watch my first video about it but essentially what it does is it'll take one five second exposure and this is what you're seeing on screen live right now one five second exposure and it stacks the next five second exposure on top of the next five second exposure on top of the next five second exposure that's why you know like a lot of people you know consider this to be you know kind of like you know what you'd actually see th you know like kind of like live almost um so yeah um and uh so yeah you know you kind of see the image building on the screen there so this is the histogram this is kind of how you adjust the image um you know I'll, I'll play around with this a little bit later um but so yeah i think it was set a little too aggressive there well you know we'll do kind of like that boom and i'll kind of play around this i'll kind of go rid of the crosshairs i don't really need those no more um, so yeah, so basically, um, with SharpCap, you know, I love this program. Um, so as you can see, so this is, I'm at 60 seconds, uh, 65 right now, 13 frames. And as you can see, I mean, wow, gosh golly, I mean, that is huge, right? I mean, you know, M51 is taking up almost the entire frame right i mean look at the detail in there um i am going to you know uh, like after the stack is done uh, i'm gonna i'm adjusting the exposure on my phone right now is what i'm doing actually so you kind of see closer to what i see on the screen so this is you know relatively close to what i see on the screen but i'll, I'll post in the final stack um i mean gosh golly so for, for those of you guys that uh, do watch my channel, you guys know, um, or you know, maybe know, <laughs> that I just bought a 24 inch daub, you know, fairly recently. I actually just had it out the, the last night, you know, because we, we've had terrible, uh, terrible weather during the spring, but we finally got some good weather. So I had the 24 inch daub out last night, and you know, I observed M51, it's one of my favorite objects. You know, it's probably my favorite galaxy. It and then maybe I'm um, 31 through a wide field apple. Uh, but anyhow, so I was observing it last night, and uh, even through a 24 inch scope, totally visually. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is just, I mean, you know, light years and light years more detail. I mean, this is just crazy detailed, right? And so we're, you know, this isn't like, you know, some kind of like 25 hour exposure, right? I mean, you know, you're watching this live, right? This is at two minutes and 40 seconds, two minutes, 45 seconds of exposure, right? And this is what we have. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, try to pound this point home too, too much longer, but you know, it's pretty amazing what you could do with the AA basically is what I'm trying to say. So I'll post in the stack at, you know, I'm going to let this run for a little bit longer. I'll post in the stack at like five minutes. Usually, you know, 
I cut out the stack at about five minutes, um, or you know, sometimes even less. It just kind of depends on how interested I'm in in the object. Um, and, and you know, sometimes if I'm looking at something you know particularly interesting, I will let it lo run longer. Um, so yeah, I'll post in the image at five minutes and right now. All right, guys. Arr, I'm a pirate, right? <laughs> so anyhow, so this is what I was talking about. So this is the iPad that I normally wear out here. Um, you know, because you know I'm, I am dealing with the bright screen. Although usually when I do visual, right, I will kill the screen. Um, so that um, I do have the light on. Usually that is not on. But anyhow, so anyway, so I'm getting my the my eyes. You know, starting to get dark, uh, dark adapted. I'm going to do one more object where I want to film, you know, kind of like my normal process of how I do EAU out here. Um, but actually what I'm doing tonight is I'm going through um, one of uh, Sue French's, uh, let's see, what's, what's this one called? I forget. Okay, so this one is called... Okay, so it's called Hunting the Dog Galaxies, okay? So this is page uh, 114 out of Deep Sky Wonders by Sue French. I recommend this, I've recommended this book before in the past. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, so as you can see, you know, this is, you know, kind of like a photocopy that I made of my book. Uh, just because, I, you know, I kind of like to, like, have the pages out like this. I have this, you know, all in the binder. And I kind of make notes, as you kind of see there. So I've done the first three objects uh, a couple nights ago. And I'm, you know, I'm going to work through the rest of these, which I think are all galaxies, actually, in this particular list, um, tonight. Um, but right now, uh, we will do a different object, uh, which is M97, a planetary nebula with the setup, just so you kind of, you know, I'm just going to videotape how I normally do a EAA. Um, if any of these other objects are super interesting, I will post in pictures of what I captured at the end of the video. Alrighty guys, so let's do it. Um, we are going to look up M97. Okay. So here she is. So we're selecting that. We're centering the object. And we are slewing to the object. So there goes the scope. Um, you know, it's kind of doing its thing. All right, so according to the planetarium, we are on the object. Um, and so I am looking at the wide field camera to see where we're at. Um, let's see here, let's do the image boost more. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if M97 is in there. Let's let's take a look at the main camera. So this is five second exposures. Image boost more. Again, I'm not sure. Let's let's try to do a test uh, live stack. See if um, see if it's showing up in the middle of the frame. Oh, okay. So as you can see, so after the slew, right? Again, pretty narrow field of view. So this is uh, M97, so we're out of the field of view. Uh, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to kill this live stack. And, you know, I could manually center this, right? But let's try to see. And I finally remember the name. It's called Plate Solving. <laughs> let's see if Plate Solving will do this for us, right? So I'm going to do Solve Plate and Sync. And theoretically, the software should do this all, and I'll kind of speed this process up, because it'll probably take a minute or two to do this. Basically what the software does, right, 
is it uh, actually um, takes a picture of the sky and then it compares it to the you know to like the known pictures that it has and then it essentially recalibrates your scope to where it should be pointed it's really awesome you just actually saw it do it I actually did this really quick normally you know sometimes it does take a little bit longer but I guess this part of the sky was easy to uh, to do for the software and let's try it again let's see how the results are I'm not sure if my camera is exactly or the two little scopes are exactly oh look at that man right in the middle of the frame perfect love it all right <clears throat> so normally what I do at this point right you know just to kind of you know go along with uh what I said I'd do, right? Which is kind of show you guys my normal process. Now, obviously, I'm turning on lights on my camera, right? <laughs> so this, you know, this isn't exactly, you know, per se, kind of what I do. Normally, you know, obviously the lights wouldn't be on. But so, what I'd normally do is I'd kill the monitor, right? And then, so, I'm uncovering my eye again, usually without the lights on, because, you know, right now, there's really no lights in the observatory at all, okay? All the lights would be off. And then, so, normally what I'd do is, I'd, you know, I'd flip the flip mirror, right? And so, now, the uh, the light, instead of shooting to this camera, is shooting up to the eyepiece. And then, I'd actually take a look, you know, in this case of M97, you know, I'd check it out, see how it looks visually, right? And then I would go and do start doing the EA stack, which you know, I'm flipping the mirror, flip mirror back, and my my <laughs> dark uh, uh, my um, dark adaptation is already blown anyway. So okay, I'm gonna kill these lights again, and let's start the stack. So I'm going to clear this tag just so we're starting fresh. Kind of broaden the histogram. All right, so here we go. So basically, yeah, that's M97 there, right? And the first couple of frames. You could very obviously clearly see the central star and you could see the two eyes. So this is after literally 10 seconds of exposure all right so i had to kind of make a little bit of an adjustment there and restart the stack for some reason i wasn't uh wasn't stacking i don't know i wasn't detecting and so basically the, the way that the stacking works is uh, it'll it'll basically detect stars right and then that's kind of how it aligns the frames and in this case for some reason it wasn't doing it uh, so yeah, yeah, so this is M97, this is 35 seconds of exposure, so less than a minute, looks pretty cool, right? Try to, try to mess around with the histogram a little bit here. Uh, yeah, there you go, I mean, you know, again, you know, the central star is very obvious, the two eyes are super obvious. This is another object that I've taken a look uh, with through the 24 inch daub, which by the way has premium optics and that type of deal. Um, I mean, you know, there, <laughs> there's just no comparison, right? I mean, the visual views are, you know, like the truly visual views, I should say, you know, they are really nice, you know, they are cool. But I mean, this is, you know, this is like a whole different ball game. I mean, <laughs> You know, it's just, I don't think there is any truly visual scope that'll show you an image like this. It's just, you know, our eyes, you know, are kind of the limiting factor, unfortunately. It's not, it's not the equipment. So anyhow, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Um, again, I am going to run through that list from the uh, Sue French's book, which again, I highly recommend if you don't own it and you know, you're kind of past the misery list, 
you know, do consider buying that book. It's not really expensive, and it, it's it's awesome. Like, I love her descriptions of objects. She basically um, actually uh, uses essentially a foreign scope and a tenant scope. Uh, and you know both the descriptions of both classes of scopes are excellent again I you know usually I use bigger scopes than what she does and you know her you know she's a very like advanced observer so her descriptions are really good even for bigger scopes or smaller like whatever you know whatever kind of scope you have um, again if I you know uh, from that list that I'm going to be observing tonight if I find any um, interesting objects I will post them in right now Thanks again for watching, guys. And if you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. See you guys in the next video. Bye.